Alright, in this video we're going to look at a modification of Euler's method which we looked at in the last video. It's in section 2.5 of our textbook called the Improved Euler Method. It has some other names that you might see if you look in other sources as well. So our textbook calls it the Improved Euler Method though, so that's what we're going to kind of focus on. And I just want to kind of go over an overview of how this method works and then we'll use the app that we used before to do most of our calculations here. Alright, so there are a bunch of formulas here. This is not something you should memorize, these formulas. I'm more interested in you knowing the ideas behind how the formulas work and how to use these numerical methods efficiently. Alright, so in this method we're going to use the average of two slopes. One slope calculated at the left end of an interval and the other slope at the predicted point at the right end of the interval. Okay, so just like before, we've got a differential equation written in the form dy dx equals some function of x and y, and we've got an initial point in general, we call that x naught, y naught. In our example here, we're going to use 0, 1 again. And just like before, if we plug that point into the right hand side of the differential equation, we get a slope. And so I'm just going to draw a little line segment through that point with some particular slope. Uh, we have an h value that's chosen that tells us how far away we want our next point to be. So the next x coordinate would be at that point. So if we use that slope at our initial point we get another predicted point and we have been calling that x1, y1. And in Euler's method we just use that to get another slope and so on and so on. Uh, but what this method does here, so I just want to kind of explain the notation a little bit. What this method does here is this first k1 here, that is the slope for that first line segment that I drew here and then this u sub n plus 1 equals k1h plus yn. So remember that the h is our delta x, the k is a slope, and yn is a y coordinate. So that would be your prior y coordinate. So for this first one here, that u sub n plus 1, that's really your y coordinate of that second point. So in this method, rather than using that second point as just what we're going to use to get our next line segment, we're using that to get a u value. And then this next k that's calculated here would be the slope at that point. So say we have a little bit bigger slope, I'm going to call that k2, and so that is a slope of that second line segment at that predicted point. And then what we're actually going to use in our actual prediction formula here is this m for slope that's the average of those two slopes that I got. So if I have one slope that's positive and a little bit big and then another slope that's positive and bigger, the average of those two slopes is going to be somewhere in between here. So I'm just going to draw a little dashed line here with a slope that's kind of in between the two slopes that I drew here. And so that's what I would actually use for my slope. Okay, so that's what I'm going to use for my slope and that's what I'll use to get my actual y1 value then and my next point and so that's what I'll call my x1, y1. Alright, we're going to go through just one uh, kind of cycle of these calculations by hand here and then we'll use the app to get the rest here. Alright, so let's look at this table down here below. We're going to use the same differential equation we used in the last example, uh, same initial value and we're going to fill out this chart here uh, until we get to the end. So we're going to do h equals 0 0.5, so our initial x coordinate and y coordinate are going to be 0 and 1, those are given, and so that's going to be our zeroth iteration, the n here is the iteration, and so we're going to do four iterations here, and so if I'm increasing by 0 0.5, my x coordinates will just increase by 0 0.5, and then my y coordinates are going to come from the prediction, the equations from the prediction. Alright, so for that first k1, I've used kind of a double subscript here. So the k1 for the first iteration, 
Remember that that's just a slope. It's a slope at the left endpoint. So it's the right-hand side of the differential equation evaluated at 0, 1. So when I plug x equals 0, y equals 1 into my differential equation, I'll get 0 plus 1 plus sine of 1. And so we get about 1.84. In general, you would keep more decimal places of accuracy than that. I'm just going to write down a few here, though. All right, and then I'm going to use that slope to get my next y-coordinate prediction. This is like a temporary y-coordinate that I get here for my u1. I'm really using that just to get another slope so that I can average the slopes. So just using basically equation of line, uh, y equals m, our m was our previous slope, times x minus x naught, our delta x, plus our prior y-coordinate. And so I get about 1.92 for that. I used more decimal places of accuracy for the 1.84 to get my 1.92. All right, now I'm going to calculate a slope at the right end. So our K1 was a slope at the left end. And the K2 is a slope at the right end of the interval. So I'm going to be plugging in my point with x equals 0 0.5 and y equals my new temporary y-coordinate that I got from my prior step here. I'm going to use that uh, for the y-coordinate in my slope equation, my right-hand side of the differential equation. And then the actual slope that I'm going to use is the average of those two slopes. So the m that I will use for my first my first prediction here uh, is going to be the average of those two slopes. So 1.84 plus 1.90 divided by 2, and so I get about 1.87. Okay, and so now I'm going to use that to get my actual next y-coordinate. So I'm just going to be using basically the y1 equals m the m that I got from my previous average of those two slopes times my delta x, that's the h, plus the prior y-coordinate. Okay, so the first point that I actually got out of my improved Euler method is at x equals 0 0.5, y equals 1.94. And when we used Euler's method, we got a predicted point of 1.92 for that first y-coordinate. So it's a little bit different here, not dramatically different, but a little bit different. And because I'm going to continue using those numbers on and on, then my results at the end will be a little bit different. All right, I'm going to use the same app we used before to go ahead and fill in this chart. And it will just output, just like before, the x and y coordinates. So I'm not going to get all these other calculations from that app. If you really want all those other calculations, probably the best way to do that is to set up a spreadsheet and use formulas in the spreadsheet and force it to do those calculations for you. Again, I'm really not interested in you doing the heavy lifting on the number crunching. I'm more interested in that you understand the concepts, the idea of using tangent lines, and for this one, using an average of two slopes to get a better prediction, and then being able to interpret your results. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up the app, and we will look at what we need to type into that to get what we want and fill in this chart. Okay, so this is the same app that I used in the last video, and so one of the things I like about this one is that uh, it does all of the different methods that we're going to use here, and it also outputs both a graph and data points. So I'm going to choose here from the drop-down menu the improved Euler method. That's what we're looking at now. Uh, I've got the same values that I had in the last video, our initial point at 0, 1 the end of our interval for the input variable at 2, and using a step size of 0 0.5, I've typed in the right-hand side of the differential equation in the first gold box there, using t for the independent variable instead of x, and I've chosen for output format both graph and data points so that I can look at both. So I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. And what we see here is a graph of those line segments generated by our improved Euler method and our table of x and y values. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those in the chart and then we'll just talk a little bit about those. 
Okay, so I filled in those Y values here with as many decimal places of accuracy as the uh, app gave us. And so you can see here that these are in the same ballpark as the Y values that I got from Euler's method. So one of the things I talked about in that last video was using a variety of methods with a variety of step sizes and looking for stability in the results. So we'll do some more of that in the next video. Uh, but I just want to talk a little bit more also about error in this method. Uh, this method is called a second order method because in general reducing the step size by a factor of R reduces the cumulative error by a factor approximately proportional to R squared. This is relatively easy to show experimentally, but it is difficult to prove. But the other thing just to remember about that is that in general, it is more accurate than the Euler method. Again, we talked in that last video about some issues about when difficulties arise, when you might have asymptotes or things like that, that the numerical methods cannot pick up on. Or if the curves are very steep, sometimes it can miss the changes in slope that might be happening in the curve. So anyway, just keep in mind that these are all approximation methods and um, they all have sources of error, but in general this is a more accurate method than the Euler method.